So I was in the shower, I was cleaning my ass and making all shirts all sparkly, spanking clean. I'm not the funny one, I'm the pretty one. Cock shots. <laughs> I just checked myself out. It's music, wine, and then loop up and get on top. The glory hole is like a, a like dick theater. I've imagined your pants. Which means your pants had better come off. Mama needs playtime. I do that. Uh, we're not sluts. We just love love. Hello, folks. This is Bradford. And this is Angela. This is another week of By the By, and it's been a big week. You were sitting, you were like, this is Angela? You were like, this is, that's kind of funny. You sounded funny. How did I sound? I'm going to have to go back and listen to it now. Yeah, you'll have to listen to yourself, because you was like, well, that's kind of odd. Anyway, uh, yeah, it has been a big week, and I am sure that everybody wants to know so much information about your gangbang and and the the big finish mm-hmm. but we're not going to talk about that <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll have to wait for that one mm-hmm. um we are going to talk about something that uh, i wanted i want to talk about because i'm okay. just sort of curious uh but first let's see what do we have coming up uh this this friday mm-hmm. like not today not tomorrow but the next day yep uh we have pendulum 10 Yes. Which is kind of awesome. And we have the meet and mingle well, beforehand. Leading into that is the meet and mingle, yeah. Yes, so. so we'll have Mr. and Mrs. H from the Bed Hoppers UK. We'll have Kate from Swinging Down Under, ourselves, and Simon from A Slut in New Zealand. So we're going to get everybody together, come out, say hello, have, have a, a drink. drink with us. Yeah. yeah, have a cocktail, have a drink, yep. have a meet and mingle. Mm-hmm. So that'll be at 6.30 prior to the pendulum party starting at 8.30. And if you're interested in that location and details, you can uh, get from Our Secret Spot. So go to their website, www.oursecretspot.com.au, and look at their upcoming events page for information on the meet and mingle. Yes. Yep. Just reach out to Lawrence and uh, mm-hmm. Jess, and they can they can hook you up. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Uh, very. I'm actually very excited for that. Uh, I know what I'm wearing. It's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm, I still haven't even thought about what I'm wearing. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see what I feel on the I've, night. <laughs> I've, been, I've been thinking about it for a while. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, it's going to be a big deal. That's right. I'm actually really excited because can we give a spoiler as to one thing you're going to wear at the club? The, or do we need to I don't know. Wait. I think, I, well, I guess we can give a spoiler. We can tell people a little bit about it, I suppose. Okay, so one thing that we've recently gotten and are just... Bradford's just starting to kind of explore and play with, and this may sound silly for a lot of you, but it's actually really important, Uh, but it's a a pouch for his insulin pump. Because typically when we're at the swingers club or any place where you're not wearing clothing, it's what do you do with the pump? So he takes the pump off. Which isn't the best choice of health. It's not the (laughs) best. And so what we recently found when looking uh, for new belts and pouches and things, we found a company out of the UK called HidIn. So it's www.hid-in.com. So it's like there's a dash in there. But they basically do designer pouches and like kind of they'll modify clothing to be able to put the pump into. And one of the things that we found on the website was a unicorn pouch. And I'm pretty sure it's meant for children, but it fits me. So <laughs> I'm a I'm a kid at heart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's that's one of the things I'm going to wear. I'll have my insulin yeah. pump on, so that way I'll be in good control. In yeah. good control, healthy, wealthy. It's, yeah. It's funny because there's a there is that mental, and, and I'm sure it's just mine own uh, mental stigma against it mm-hmm. because you know play friends never comment on it. I've had people ask me what it is, but once they know what it is, they don't care. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's I'm I am kind of excited and curious to see what kind of response I get from it. I, yeah. I have a feeling that I'm going to get a lot more of the "what the fuck is that" <laughs> rather than yeah. even, I'll get more of that uh-huh. than I do when I just have the insulin pump in a pocket or right. um, shirtless and you see the the the, the sight. Yeah, I'm really curious to see, like I said, um, because so far you've had one of the pouches that you've worn like when sleeping and you really like that. So if this, yeah, and and we even talked about that if this works out well, you may still wear the pump at desire rather than going back to shots. Yes, which could be, yeah, that that's, I'm still trying to get my head around that one. So uh, if that happens, Mm. I'll I'll have 
I'll have the nice lady yeah. custom make me some stuff. But yeah, we'll post was, pictures and whatnot. Yeah, and, and it was really exciting to find this company because we hadn't seen anything where people were really customizing it and making it easier for active people, daily use, going out and looking nice because one of the ones you got as well was a velvet pouch. Yeah, black, black velvet. Yeah. Black and, velour. I don't yeah. know. It's, it's kind of fuzzy and I love it. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it may seem silly to a lot of people, but yet it can really make a difference in whether you want to keep the pump on or not. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm excited. Yeah, me too. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be interesting. It'll yeah. be cute. Uh, so... Uh, leading into that, we have Desire, which is our next big, big thing that's coming up, which is uh, November 2nd through 9th. Mm -hmm. That is the Life on the Swing Set takeover. Yes. Uh, if you follow Twitter at all, you'll have seen recently that Torrid Souls, uh, who have been married for quite a while, two ladies, went to Desire and were denied entrance by local management. And this is something that I, I we're gonna we're gonna talk about this at a at a later time. We're gonna dissect it completely. Mm -hmm. But I'm just gonna put it out there and say, look, you know, there's been a lot of outrage focused at desire, and admittedly from us as well, and this in this inequality of, of treatment. But realistically, I think we need to sort of look at a mirror and see that that's where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. Desire is doing what the market wants, and this. Would this have been such a big deal if it was two men rather than two ladies? And the answer is absolutely not. It would have been expected. And uh, I, I think that's part of the problem is mm -hmm. that we we see couples as male-female only. And we're like, oh, yeah, but it doesn't count for female-female because we like them. Um, and they all, there's often that conversation of the predatory men, uh, which... I think is about as realistic as there being an actual, you know, need for a wall in the U.S. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's based in fear, ignorance, and uh, in education, both from the swingers out there and from the men coming into the swinging world. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna we're gonna break apart that later on, but that was something that has been sort of on my mind recently that if you want to fix the problem, step up for all same sex couples, not yes. just for same sex women, because you know, you're right there. You're perpetuating a myth of swingers that mm -hmm. all the men want is a female, female threesome. And also that if there is a male, male couple, well, it's just two single males trying to game the system that they're not actually a couple. Exactly. Cause you see people say that sometimes. Exactly. Or, you know, again, it goes back to the bisexual, bisexual male mm -hmm. males don't exist. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, there's a lot, you know, just looking at some of the, of the posts on Twitter, you know, there was a, again, it was a wonderful to see such a great amount of support for mm -hmm. this, for these two, uh, to do for these two ladies, and I completely think that it's bullshit, and they should have been let in. But I also think that it's bullshit that it, two men should be let in as well, yeah. or that two men should not be let in. Mm -hmm. um, a couple is a couple is a couple, and what? How do you define a relationship? Yeah. If it if it's a, you know, if it's a male female male relationship, or male male female, or three ladies or it doesn't matter right. uh, if you can fit that many people into a room <laughs> you should allow them to stay in the room we should limit it to three look I've, reasonably ha yeah <laughs> having been to desire no more than three in a room it it just gets crowded the suitcases alone You'd yeah be amazing how much you take on it <laughs> so yeah that's that's our scratching the surface thoughts on it we'll dive deeper into that uh yeah, in a future sure. podcast for sure so mm-hmm are we going to talk about your gangbang? No, we're not. Ha, huh? the suckers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to talk about a, a little incident that happened uh, a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. You were in Melbourne. Yes. And after after going to a sauna once, you can't have enough. You just can't, you can't take, you know, you have to have more sauna, clearly. Uh -huh. So you were traveling by yourself. Yes. And on a Tuesday night, you went back to Bay City Sauna. Yes. Uh, in South Melbourne, wherever it is, it's south of Melbourne. So that's the sauna that we had been to as a couple on the Saturday night a few weeks ago when we were there together. And I knew that on Tuesdays, I forget what they actually call it. I should probably pull up the website. Uh, but on Tuesdays, they allow females, uh, single females, they allow 
I believe, couples as well. Yes. And they allow uh, cross-dressers, transgender, basically anybody can come, as well as the, the normal gay and bi men. And so I thought that that would be... I happened to be in Melbourne for work on a Tuesday... Taboo Tuesday. Sorry, just to jump in. It's called Taboo Tuesday, and it's explore and experience your wildest desires. Yes. Woof. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so I was down there on a Tuesday for work, and I thought, you know, what am I going to do tonight? And this is, That seemed like a, a good option to go and explore, and, and admittedly, I went into it as just I wanted to see what the crowd was like and see how the dynamic was different than when we were there as a couple. So that was my mentality going in. I didn't really expect anything else. Just go see the dynamic, see the crowd, have a little bit of entertainment because what else am I doing when I'm there for work? Right. And and it is a it is an, a, a bar that you can go mm-hmm. and you can they've got actually surprisingly good uh, house red wine. Yeah. And I know when I was there the Tuesday after you had left, I had a blast just sitting there talking to folks. Yeah. And and talking to uh, to M and Q and. It was, so yeah, I, yeah. I, when you said, I'm going to go to the sun, I was like, of course you are. It makes perfect <laughs> sense. Uh, but then you t- told me something that really surprised me, which was that you played with somebody. I did. And that to me was such a shocker. I don't know why it was a shocker. Uh, but yeah, so tell us, tell us more. So interestingly, I, so I didn't go into it thinking that I was going to play with anyone. Were you even match, wearing matching bra and panties? Mm, yes. Okay, so you thought that you might play with somebody, though. <laughs> well, anytime I'm going out to a venue where my clothes... Because admittedly, I thought that I would dress down and sit at the bar in bra and panties. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Because that's what we did when we went as a couple. Fair enough. Because when I went, I just sat in my full clothes. I never okay, dressed down. So I don't even think I got a key. I just, I just sat there and chatted with them and drank. Right. Okay, so yeah. So I did... Anytime I'm going to someplace where clothes might come off, I'll... You know, make sure that the underwear is at least decent. So like, right? so like swingers clubs, saunas, the grocery, things right. like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Clean up in aisle three. <laughs> oh God, like, we're going to need the, the floor is wet sign. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> you mentioned grocery. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Mm-hmm. Okay, so? So, yeah, so I got there, and it was pretty early. Like, I think they may have been, it was probably 7.45, 8 o'clock, something like that. Right. So it was pretty early in the evening. But I wanted to get there earlier rather than later, both because I knew I wasn't going to stay super late since I did have to go to work the next day. And be, you know, coherent and think and actually do stuff. And also, very much like at our secret spot, I like to be there early and kind of feel that energy building. Right. And just see who comes in when, how they act, just kind of just get a feel for it, right? So, yeah, I got there reasonably early. There were a handful of people there already. And it was interesting because overall... What it ended up being as far as the crowd goes is there were a handful of single women that clearly go frequently. I say single women. They may have partners, but they were there alone um, or appeared to be anyway. Maybe their partners were off elsewhere in the sauna. I have no idea. Uh, so, But there were a handful of women that kind of congregated and sat uh, on some of the lounges off on the side and interacting and, and really, you know, having fun talking to each other and laughing. And it was very clear that they knew each other. And mm-hmm. I was sitting at the bar. And uh, so there, and there were a few people kind of around the bar. Uh, there were single men, of course, around throughout. There were a few couples. Yeah. And yeah, so it was an interesting crowd because it was a, a good mix of couples, singles, there were, there later in the evening, there was one, I think two drag queens that came in. Mm-hmm. There was at least one for sure. And then there were a few people that were in drag. And admittedly, one of the women in drag caught my eye and I was like, oh, you know, she looks pretty interesting. Maybe I should talk to her. But she sat on the far side of the bar, like at the end of the bar. Not too far from me because I was kind of at the corner. 
Right. Um, but far enough away and talked to M and just kind of seemed to be, you know, in her own little world. And so I was like, all right, maybe I won't go over there. And, yeah. <laughs> She's not interested in having conversations yeah, with anybody. Yeah, not at that point. It, it didn't appear to be anyway. And, and I guess I was also not feeling like super, I'm going to go up and pick up somebody kind of thing. Again, right. I just kind of wanted to see what, what it was like on okay. a Tuesday night. And so somewhere along the way, this guy comes over and starts talking to me. And he was really nice. Just sitting, chatting, whatever. And oh, so back to what you were saying about sitting at the bar fully clothed. I was fully clothed. Okay. So, you know, I had on a skirt top. I didn't dress down when I got there because not many other people were. So I was like, I'll just kind of feel it out. Um, but yeah, so this guy comes up and starts talking to me for a while, really. And we're just kind of chatting, and other people are coming up and getting drinks around here and there. And then he goes away at some point. And somewhere along the way, another guy, two guys, people would come up and chat. You'd just talk to them. Couples would come up. Uh, yeah, and but I wasn't really, none of the other guys were really engaging, I mm -hmm. would say. And so it just kind of was like, yeah, fine, whatever. A little bit of conversation to be polite. And then they would get their drink and wander on. Also, because I wasn't like probably jumping at the gun to be like, right. hey, do you yeah. want to do something? Yeah. And uh, there was a couple that came up a bit later. And they were fun because she was, you know, very outgoing. She was just one of those people that just is friends with people instantly kind of thing. And her partner was really nice and and. I was chatting with him and talking to her. And, and yeah, it was just kind of nice to be talking to them. And admittedly, I was kind of like, oh, maybe I'll play with them later if I decide to do anything. But And they obviously had been there regularly. They It was not their first time. And so they were interacting with other people as well. And I'm not really sure exactly what happened. I think they went out to smoke and interact with other people. And the guy that I was first talking to, he came back and sat down and we chatted for a while more. And again, there was kind of more interactions around and about and stuff. And then he came back a third time and sat down and we were talking and things. And at some point I was kind of on that cusp of like, I'm either gonna go back to the hotel now or I'm actually gonna do something. And I kind of wanted to play. I didn't really know exactly what I wanted. It was like, you know, I could go to the glory holes or I could just, you know, I just wasn't sure. So it's kind of trying to, in my head, suss that out while I was talking to this guy. But then I was like, you know what? He's a really nice guy. He's been sitting here talking to me for a good chunk of the night. And he could have gone and he may have gone in the meantime, hell, I don't know, and played with other people. But at the same time, he's, you know, he's been here. He's been nice. and I do like him. And so I just looked at him and I was like, do you want to go find a place to play? And he was like, yes. And so we both got up and he was in a towel. So that was easy. And <laughs> um, yeah, so we just kind of went and found I think it ended up being like maybe the second room or something. Anyway, it was basically the first empty room that, you know, we could play in. Mm -hmm. So we didn't really wander too far to find somewhere. I'm assuming that's pretty normal. So I'm going to guess those first one or two rooms get played in a lot. Right, right. <laughs> you might need a little extra cleanup in those ones. Um, yeah, but we just went back there and he was really nice, really polite, very consent focused. You know, it was always, may I kiss your neck? Can I touch you? Can I, you know that kind of thing and and basically we started off with me going down on him because that's what i wanted i was like i want to go down on someone so did you dress down first or i did didn't so, okay, I, so you wore your clothes i wore then... my clothes into the room okay. because i didn't want to take the time to stop by the lockers and whatever and so i just wore my clothes in the room took them off in there and you know just put them in the corner kind of off to the side okay yeah. but yeah get those dry cleaned i mean the place was really really clean <laughs> But I would never put any of my clothing on it uh -huh. on the floor. I even no, it wasn't much. on the floor. It was on the side of or on the corner of the little oh, the bed thing. The bed thing. Okay, yeah. the gym mat. The gym mat uh, thing. Yeah, because yeah, I even hang my underwear on the door. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I would never put it on the floor. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. It was on the gym mat. It was off to the side. Fair so, enough. Yeah, because it was a. I mean, the gym mats were you know bed quote unquote whatever you want to call it. The play space is pretty good size. It's about the size of our dining room table. Yeah, usually. yeah. It's not. Yeah, it's not like terribly small or anything. Right. So there's plenty of room, I guess, depending on what you're doing or who, who you're, you're doing, doing, how many people are in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, so we got in there, and I started going down on him. 
and did that for a couple minutes maybe. And then he pulled me up and he went down on me for a bit. And yeah, then he, he was just like, do you want to have sex? And sure. And so he got a condom and uh, I think we ended up going through probably four different positions. Wow. And Describe those. Uh, well, we started out with him on top because okay. I was already laying down from him going down on me. Okay. So like basic missionary. So basic missionary. And I'm trying to think of what came next. Might have been doggy. Doggy was either two or three. I forget where that was in there. Um and yeah, so, and then I think I ended up on top at some point, but it was just, you know, we would just kind of go for a bit and then stop for a second and then change condom, change position, go for a bit. And yeah. Um, so yeah, it, that was, it was really nice just to kind of, it, it, I didn't really feel like there was a lot of pressure cause it, I don't know, it just felt easy with them, you mm-hmm. know, it wasn't, Yeah. Uh, and I, I would assume that's probably the way it is with most people, but yeah, it just was really easy. And we just kind of, you know, went for a bit. And then at some point it was, it was clear that like he needed a break. I could use a break. And so it's like, all right, let's go back out, get a drink kind of, and just see from there. So he went off to shower and I knew I wasn't going to stay. So right. I was just like, I'm not going to even bother showering. So I'll just go back yeah. to the hotel. If I'd stayed, I definitely would have showered. Because if you're going to play again, you know, it's right, yeah. polite. I mean, we do that at OSS. Yeah. And, um, but I knew that I wasn't going to play again. So I just you know, got dressed, back dressed again, and went back out. And it was interesting, though, because every time, and I'm assuming that this is the case for most people, but every time I would go from like, like when we were going from the bar to the play space or bar to the restroom or back or whatever, up and down that long skinny hallway, there would be guys kind of lined up on the sides, whether whatever they were doing, whichever spaces they were looking at, watching, doing, going to. But there would be guys there. And anytime I go down the hallway, they would all just kind of like back off to the sides. <laughs> and it's just funny because like, this feels kind of weird. <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming that that's normal, that people just kind of give you your space. Right. Um, but or maybe not. I don't know. No, typical. Sign I was gonna say because there was no they, they groping. Want to brush or, up against. Yeah, yeah. No, and there wasn't any of that. So and maybe it's because I'm female or something. Maybe, maybe that's the difference. Yeah. But that was a bit weird to me because I was like, "This feels weird." Everybody's like backing away, but I get it and I appreciate it. It's you know, it's fine. It was just not what I expected because I just expect people to stay in their space and you know, to like excuse me and right, work right. around and yeah. But I didn't. I didn't have to do that. Um, but yeah, it was it was good. It was fun, and like I said, he was very consent focused, and just you know, he would always ask before he did something, and and it was it was polite, it was easy, and yeah, yeah, cool. And then yeah. So, like, did did he come in the end? Mm-mm. No, no, because even after the first position, he said something about I haven't come yet, which yes, I know, I realize that. <laughs> I didn't really tell if somebody comes or not. But no, he didn't um, end up coming. Mm. So, And I don't know how typical that is. Not necessarily for him, but just in the sauna environment. Right. I don't know. Well, you know, it's funny because we've seen it in the club where... Oh, yeah. You, you know, guys just can't get over the edge with a condom on. Yeah. Or just can't get over the edge if it's not their partner. Yeah. Which I think is interesting. I think there's... I would love to understand more of the psychology behind that. Mm. The second rather than the first, of course. Uh and to know how common is that. Yeah. And and again, not having any experience, only with the swingers club, which I think is different because you are typically there with a partner. Right. Um, you know, obviously Pendulum, there'll be a few singles, but, but typically, you know, men are there with partners. So I think it is a different mentality in a different environment, obviously, than the sauna where you're just a single guy going around. There's a bunch of single guys around. And... I don't know. I'm going to say single air quotes, like you're single at that moment in that environment. And lone guys. Yeah. And so I don't know. And you would know more than I would how many people tend to to actually come during play versus not. And I don't know. know, Every time I've ever been at the sauna, uh, somebody, whoever I'm playing with, we both end up having an orgasm. Yeah. Um, Now it might be at your own hands, which, you know, that's different. But yes, I would say. Every time that I've played, maybe once or twice now, mm-hmm. but every time that I've played with somebody at a sauna, 
there's an orgasm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of what I would expect, but I can also see where it wouldn't happen. Right. And it may also be different with a female there. Right. I don't, I don't know. Um, cause I don't know mental spaces of men in saunas. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like further research is needed. That is above our pay grade. (laughs) Maybe further research has been done. I don't know. Further research by you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, You're going to be so excited to go to Melbourne every week. I know. Every every, uh, chance you can. I know. Whenever I can go down now for work, I'll be like, all right. Whenever I can go down for work. (laughs) Is it a time that women can attend? Yes or no? It's Tuesday, Thursdays, or Saturday. Right. So... uh, Tell me a little bit more, like, about this, about the guy. Mm-hmm. So, like, I think that we've, I've had a lot of conversations recently on both Instagram and Twitter uh, with with guys that are like, how did you find her? Where mm-hmm. did you find her? You know, what kind of guy is she interested in? Mm-hmm. And I think this also sort of leads up into uh, potentially the gangbang as well, which we'll talk about next time uh, mm-hmm. or at some future time. But... I'm I'm curious to know like what was it about this guy? So right. like how was he dressed? Uh, so when he came to the bar, he was only in a towel. Okay, so he was always in a towel. Yeah. So easy opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. What- which, admittedly, you know, from his perspective, you know, yes, I was sitting at the bar, and I don't know. Like at the same time, I'm kind of like, why did he come up to me? Because I am sitting at the bar, and I suppose if he's a regular, which he was. That I am someone new. Fresh meat. So fresh meat. But at the same time, I was fully dressed. So I had on a, you know, a shirt and skirt. It was, I wasn't dressed down yet. Right. So it's kind of, I wasn't really necessarily putting off ready to play, but at the same time, fresh meat, maybe it doesn't matter. Yeah. And you're also in a location where... You expect it. You don't expect it, but mm. it is a much higher yeah. uh, chance that you're going to say yes. Mm-hmm. And. Which leads back to the what I think is funny is that you initiated play. He didn't ask mm-hmm. you if you wanted to. You asked him if he wanted to. So he was in a towel. What what did the guy mm-hmm. look like? Age, looks. Oh gosh, age. I would say probably I would say around my age, so around forty ish, maybe late thirties, early forties. It's hard to really say for sure, but I would say right around there, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely I wouldn't put him much over the early 40s. I would have said somewhere in that cusp. Okay. Plus or minus a few years. Long hair, short hair? Um, Mostly bald. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I would say it wasn't... He he was an attractive guy. Was he drop-dead gorgeous? No. But he was attractive and he had tattoos. And so, of course, that's an easy opener to ask about and talk yeah. about. Uh, yeah, but it was... I would say it was more personality than looks. Because looks are important just kind of as a an immediate am I at all interested or not and but beyond that like there can be a wide spectrum I feel like right I, I tend to agree yeah. it's, it's one of those things that a personality will get you much farther yes. than anything else to be honest yeah yeah and I would say as far as personality goes I think what what helped and what attracted me to him was that a, he did sit down and take the time to talk to me for a while. He was easy to understand. He was clear because some of the people that would come up would be mumbling. And, and it's yeah. hard with music going. It's hard to hear you. And I'm like, I'm not going to carry a conversation when I really have to strain and work <laughs> at it. Like, I, that was not in the mood for that. So you hear that, folks? Enunciate. <laughs> <laughs> Make it easy. Yeah, talk loud enough, you know. Just, yeah, make make it easy to have a conversation. And so, like, the one guy I know that came up, he was kind of mumbling, and it was hard. And I was just like, nope, too hard. Go away. And and there were others that were, I would say, lurking around, but they wouldn't come up and initiate conversation. Right. And especially at first, I wasn't sure I wanted to play, so I wasn't going to be like, hey, come on over. You know, I wasn't exactly welcoming in that manner. Um, but so there were, you know, people that would kind of walk by or they would eye you. And I was just like, meh, you know, uh, and they were attractive. It's not like they weren't attractive, but at the same time, having that initiative to come up and actually start a conversation. Right. And so, yeah, so he came up and started talking to me, sat down for a while and had a drink. And so we just were just chit chatting and it was, it was easy. It was just, it was about lifestyle. It was about life. It was just, you know, about the tattoos and, and the meanings behind those. And just a lot of just general conversation, you know, it wasn't anything 
earth shattering, but it was easy. It wasn't hard to have a conversation. If there was a lull, that was okay, which is another thing. Some people don't handle silence very well. Uh, yeah, I, I would say it was that. He was quick to smile. He, you know, would make jokes here and there. And it, yeah, it was just, just easy. Who wants to work at this stuff? <laughs> so funny. But it is, if you find someone, though, that matches up, it does make it a, a lot better, right? right? Because, yeah. if you know, because somebody else, it could be really easy for them with you, but not for me because... We interact differently. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's funny. You know, it's like, who wants to work? And what's funny about that is, I think in every situation like that, one, if not both of you are working. Mm. Yes, but at the same time, it's not... We all have those conversations where you're, you're talking to somebody and you're... You're, you know that it's dragging and you know that like, oh my gosh, we have to keep this going. So as you're speaking or as they're speaking, you're thinking of the next thing that you can bring up right. or the next thing so to talk about. you're not actively listening. You're not actively listening. And it's it's stressful because it's like, I need to listen, but I also need to figure out where this is going to go. And I, I don't want to have to work that hard at where the conversation goes. It should just kind of flow naturally. And again, if you're if you're reasonably matched up with the person, then it will. And if it lags, if it's difficult, if it's stressful at all, then that tells me it's probably shouldn't bother. Right, yeah. I know that sounds terrible, but... Yeah. No, no, I, I, I tend to agree. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... it's so I guess it, that's how I define easy, yeah. is that I'm not... I'm not... While we're having a conversation, I'm not thinking of the next topic, the next sentence. What can I say that's going to keep this going? Because if I have to work that hard to keep it going, then why am I there? Why am I doing this? And that's not to say that you're not working at engaging with the person, because I think that's different. Right. Yeah. If that makes sense. It probably doesn't make sense. I think it does. I think it makes sense. So... Was this because you often say that the best way to get into your pants is through your funny bone? Mm-hmm. Uh, was this one of those situations, or was it just that it was you were sort of primed to play? You were in the right location, and he was available, or was it something that like would this? I guess the same thing. Would this same uh, result happened if you were at a bar, mm. even if it was your hotel bar? So. I would say it was a little of both. So it was, it was, I would say, a lot because I was there primed, especially after being there while I was like, all right, I'm, wanted, I'm ready to play now. Um, so it did take me a bit to warm up to the idea of playing there because I, I went into it just, I'm just going to suss it out. Right. And now going back, I probably will have that expectation from the beginning. But it was the first time I'd been by myself. Right, yeah. So... I just, yeah, I was just kind of like, I'm just going to take it easy and just sit here and feel it out. Uh, So I think it was a bit, though, the location and just being a little bit primed, especially after a while, and interacting both with him and with the other couple in particular. Uh, There was a a second couple that I interacted with a little bit, but I knew I wasn't going to play with them Um, because they were interested in other people and, you know, had their own thing going on. But the the one couple was really nice. And like I said, they were kind of like, oh, I could play with them. But then they ended up distracted at the end anyway. And and I did see them before we left, though. Uh, And she had dressed down. She had this gorgeous, um, it was like some kind of blingy, black with bling underwear and bra. And then a kind of a really, I'm going to say a wide lace, kind of not mesh, but it was a lace kind of... uh, like a little Mm cover-up, like what you would see maybe at the beach or something, but Uh it was a black little lace cover-up over it, so it was very see-through. You could see the bra and the panties and looked really good on her. Yeah, so that was... Yeah, I liked looking at that. That was pretty. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, and he was cute too. But yeah, so admittedly, I thought, oh, maybe I'll play with them. But then, yeah, just just, they went away, and I didn't feel like chasing them necessarily. So Yeah. (laughs) Um, Filling the too hard basket. Yeah. Yeah, because I didn't really think that anything was going to happen necessarily anyway and but yeah so this guy though he kept coming back i say that was the other thing was that he didn't just come once chat for a few minutes and then go away because then i would have been like all right fine he's moved on found something else you know he's doing something else wandering around elsewhere or whatever but he came back a few more times and just would sit down and just chat and again it just there was no pressure it was just very much just uh kind of a I'm here if you're interested kind of right. vibe. But there wasn't any pushiness. You know, it was 
I'm not as easy. I know I keep saying that, <laughs> but it's funny. I'm just, I'm just I don't know to, how else to describe yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm only trying to dig down to see yeah. what does easy mean. Yeah, and I think for me it is. He wasn't. Uh, he wasn't like crack me up, laughing, funny. But there were little things here and there. Were you know to bring a smile, to bring a laugh, just good conversation. Like I said, being present without being pushy or forceful. Mm-hmm. That's a big thing because if somebody's really pushy with right, me, that yeah. turns me off instantly. Uh, and unless you know, maybe if it's later at night and they're. And it's not that you can't ask for what you want, because I do like when you ask for what you want. It's how you ask for it. Right. And, and do you do it in a uh, an extremely assertive, like, I expect this or you're going to do this kind of way? That that puts me off. As opposed to, hey, are you interested? Do you want to? Right. That kind of thing. Uh, and again, insinuating and trying to lead me on doesn't work well because I don't get those subtleties oftentimes. You don't. It's so no. adorable. I've seen people try to pick you up and they're using they're using that like like just beneath the layer of mm-hmm. of, of sensuality kind of talk. Passive. Passive yeah. and and you know they're like, "Man, I could really use a blowjob right now." And you're like, "Yeah, well, I'm sure there's somebody around here who might give you one." <laughs> <laughs> well, whereas if somebody were to look at you and go, Hey, would you give me a blowjob? You'll either say yes or no. Yeah. Yeah. And like, if you say yes, then woohoo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, and I try to be better about picking up on those things. I'm still not good at it. I'm just not. You're just, it's just not in your nature. No. Uh, you flirt in a completely different way than other people flirt. And it's... Well, surely there's people out there that flirt like me. I can't oh, be I'm, the only one. <laughs> no, absolutely. I didn't say... But... It, okay. Yeah. I didn't say that any other people. I meant then the vast majority. Uh, you're just very direct in no. in your flirtation. You know what you want, and it's a great like again, like the fact that you looked at him and said, "Do you want to go play?" Like that's I like that. That's no. awesome. Uh, and it w- I wish that more people would be more direct like that. I think there would be a lot happier people out there. But we're always concerned as to what somebody's going to say, and I think the thing that we're most concerned about is hearing the words "no." Right. And you know, my my attitude is if you tell me no. That's awesome. I, if I'm going to fail, I want to fail early. That way I don't waste my time mm. thinking that I might have a chance with you. Well, also, if you hear the words no, you know your place with them. And if you still want to hang out with them or talk to them or continue on with whatever you're doing, if you both do, then that's great. That's fine. But if you're specifically looking for someone to play with and you hear the words no, like you said, then you know your place and you know to move on and look for someone else. And so it is just kind of completing that circle and then there's no wondering as to whether it's going to happen or not right and you're no worse off if someone says no you are no worse off than you were before absolutely yes and and because you didn't have it to begin with and you still don't have it yeah exactly (laughs) you are in the same absolute boat yeah but uh yeah no that's it's it's interesting because like i said you know i knew you were going to the sauna but i honestly if you'd asked me to put money on i was like no she won't play Mm-hmm. Knowing you had to work the next day, right. but it's it's was amazing to me, and I was like, I, I want to understand this. And like, so I guess if you can distill it down, uh-huh. if for for listeners who might want to pick you up, mm-hmm. uh, should they ever see you, mm-hmm. uh, like, what are the what are the highlights? What are you looking for? What uh, it can you even quantify it? Do you even know, or is it just oh, like goodness. it's just sort of this thing that's in the air, and it's. Com- I accept that it's completely dependent on you, your mm. mood, and when they bump into you. Yes, and I think that that's true for anybody in any situation, Absolutely. right? Because it, we're all, you know, we're all in. We have a world that we live in at any particular time, and that world will change all the time. It's always changing, so it's it's mood Deep dependent. With Angela, <laughs> it's it's mood dependent. It can be hormone dependent. It can be situational. How much sleep have I had? The <laughs> fact that I wasn't there with you immediately put me a little more on guard, and also very much of a I'm not going to play tonight yeah. was my mindset going in. But then after being there for a while and interacting with people, and it was no different. Really, than any, even though it's a sauna, it was no different than a swingers club. It, you know, yeah, absolutely, I would be, agree with that. Yeah, because people, you know, while there are single guys roaming around, there's also single women roaming around, 
and there's couples and it's just yeah everybody's just there and we're all there sort of for the same thing whether it is interaction and socialization or whether it's playing of some sort some people want to just go and get into the spa and that's you know completely fine uh yeah, I, but I think, yeah, for me going into it, it was, I went into it not thinking that anything was going to happen. I just wanted to see the kinds of people that were there, how they interacted, what the vibe was like, what it was like on a Tuesday night. And admittedly, you know, if I liked it, then I would go back another Tuesday night. That was kind of my mentality right? going into it. But then as the night went on and as I talked to people and really kind of, I would say, warmed up a bit myself and let the guard down a bit as well. Because again, you not being there, I was kind of like, uh. And, and so I kind of let the guard down a bit and warmed up to the situation. And that's when I started thinking more that maybe I would, I wanted to play. And especially I love going down on guys. And so I, you know, wanted to do that. And it's like, well, maybe I can at least do that. If there's somebody that's interesting, I might play with them. And yeah, I think it was just that, so for me, it's, it's that somebody who is, like I said before, looks are important initially and just that you don't completely turn me off. I mean, <laughs> well, and, I think there's, you know, I, I'm going to, I know what you mean. And just to be clear, you're saying that as long as you're clean, presentable, presentable, yeah. well, well kept, yeah. you know, it's, it's one of those, you don't. There's no one particular look that absolutely always does it for me. Right. But cuz I you know we've both played with people of all shapes and sizes, yeah. of all ages and races. You know, it's that that doesn't No. It is it is being clean, presentable, um being if able If you smell nice, that right there is yes, the first. Yes. Yes. And I will say that there was one person that came up that just absolutely reeked of smoke. They'd been outside smoking and they're just it just stuck to them. That's a big turnoff for me. Right, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't want to have sex with a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> Some people it sticks to more than others. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so but I would say that being clean, presentable, being well spoken and it doesn't mean you have to like be super eloquent like a speechwriter or anything, but just being able to hold a conversation, being a, have good English, have good grammar. I mean, it's not super difficult, but just However, if you if any of our listeners ever walk up to Angela and go, Forsooth, young mistress, <laughs> would thine like me betwixt thine legs? <laughs> I will licketh thou, then she will absolutely let you go down on her. I will spread those legs. Right there, right. You have to say that exactly. So yeah, right then and there she's like, Alright, well take these pants off. Here you go. Get betwixt. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my god, that's just great. That's just great. <laughs> yeah, so I think it is a lot of, of personality. It is being able to convey what you think and what you want, who you are verbally, and be able to carry on that conversation. And it doesn't have to be anything earth shattering. It just needs, just like I said, there needs to be a little bit of chemistry there to make that easy enough that it's not, nobody feels like they're holding up the entire conversation. So, how do you, do you have advice for, I mean, this is, a, a, a stretch, I think, from what you just said. But do you have advice for people like, let's say, you're an introvert? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I know you are more attracted to extroverts. Yes. Typically. Yes. Because you tend to, I think, be more of an introvert. Especially Which, in that kind of setting. In that kind of setting, yes. you tend to be by yourself. Yes. You're more of an introvert. When we're together. I think you're more the extrovert and I'm more the introvert, which Mm. I think people are listening going, what? But it's true. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But so what do you do? How do you, if you're an introvert, how do you, uh, how do you fix that? How do you, how do you, you're an introvert in a situation where sex is clearly on the table. Mm -hmm. How do you get that? So that's interesting because at, a, a sauna or a swingers club, someplace where I'm going to say sex is readily available, mostly ex- expected, then it, you know, it, it could be as easy as going up to someone and asking them if they want to play because especially at the sauna, it is a bit more transactional. Right. Sometimes yeah. at the swingers club, it's a lot more transactional as well. So if 
And I think maybe it depends on if that's what you're looking for. Are you looking for transactional or are you not? But if you're introverted, it's not so easy to walk up to someone and say, hey, do you want to play or are you interested in this? Exactly. And so maybe it's a bit of, I don't have a good clear answer, but what I would think is if you're in a space that's more conducive to what you want. So if you want to interact with people, like I was sitting at the bar, that's an easy place for people to come up and to have those casual interactions that could then become more because as people are getting drinks, um, there's time that they there's, have to there's be there. time and they're looking around and, and, you know, I did have a lot of interactions with people, verbal interactions with people just as they were getting drinks and coming up. And at any point, if I wanted to, I could extend that and, and, make myself more welcoming, whether that's physically turning towards them, opening up your body and opening yourself in a manner like as opposed to arms across, closed off. Even leaning against the bar can be a very closed position. And so if they're coming up for a drink and, and I'm interested in them, then I will open my body up a bit more, pull the shoulders back, turn towards them, look them in the eye more, try to engage them, try to keep their conversation or keep their interest on me in some way. So that's if I want to be social, but at the same time, if I want to play, and like I said, towards the end of the evening, once I started thinking I want to go down on somebody, I was thinking about going to the glory holes, because that's in a natural, easy place that if I'm over there, then I can find someone to go down on. And so, yeah, I think it's a bit of just, especially in that environment, it's easier to be in an area that's conducive to what you want. A swingers club is a little bit harder because now OSS has the new glory holes, but so if you're interested in, in oral sex, that's a great place for it. But many don't. So it's, do you, are you in a playroom where you're watching more voyeur style and then you can potentially be drawn into play by someone else or interact with other people that are also watching. And, you know, whether it's just kind of reaching out and, and asking them if, you know, you can can touch them or hug them or cuddle them or depending on what you're looking for. Um, so, yeah, other than putting yourself in this scenario, kind of in a physical environment where you might be able to get what you want, the other things I would say are, are pay attention to nonverbal cues because you may be introverted and it may be hard for you to start a conversation and to ask for what you want, but you can always see how you take a second and like almost step out of your body and see yourself from someone else's perspective and how do you present yourself? Are you closed off? Are you open? Do you have a smile on your face? Are you scowling? Are mm -hmm. you sitting there, you know, because it's easy, especially if you're sitting at a bar or in a lounge area to kind of have that natural, it may be a stoic blank look, really, but at the same time, you're not smiling. That's not inviting to people. Right, yeah. So even just to have little upturned corners of your mouth, it doesn't have to be like a big crazy <laughs> clown grin or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the nonverbal cues can really say a lot. So I think I, I would say body language has a lot to do with it. And catching people's eyes, doing the eyebrow flash, little things like that can convey interest as well. Good advice. <laughs> I like, you really took like, grr. Like, <laughs> I ask a simple question. You're like, I'm going to answer this question <laughs> in dissertation format. I try to answer it as best I can. Because I was trying to think of what did I do? Like what, right. you know. Yeah. And clearly it worked. No. Yeah. Well, for at least one person. Well, but in the couple, I would say, though, that the couple, because I did see them before I left, the one that she had on the, the blingy right. set and then the lace overlay. And I did see them before I left. And they were, they, I think, I'm not sure if they had played yet or not played yet, but I think they had because I think they'd gone away and come back. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, but they were, you know, it was just very loud, boisterous, mm -hmm. you know, kind of interactions. And, and very much of, I was like, if you're ever up in Sydney, come to our secret spot. You know, that kind of thing. And so, yeah, it was, but they were really fun to interact with and, and play with. Yeah. Well, I say play with, but talk to. Right, right. Yeah. I, know, I know what you mean. Yeah. So did, I'm, I'm curious now, did you exchange contact information with the fellow? No. Interesting. Why? No. I mean, he knows we do the podcast. Uh -huh. We talked about that. Uh -huh. Um, but no, I didn't. And I don't know why, because I wondered that later. I was, it just, it didn't occur to me. It really didn't. Yeah, because every time I find somebody that I really like in a city, mm. I always want to exchange information with them. That way we can hang out again yeah. and maybe play again. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, it just didn't even occur to me. Hmm. And I don't know why. I mean, I kind of like after I left, I was like, oh, I probably should have given him a card or something. But I was already, you know, back at the hotel and whatever. And just, yeah. Too late then. Yeah. 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 Just didn't. 
So if I go back, maybe he'll be there. There you go. One day. Who well, knows? Oh. <laughs> There's something nice about that, too, is just knowing that two ships might once again yeah. bump again to, the, to each other yeah. in the groinal region. <laughs> Wait, what, what kind of ship is mine? Um, I, um, I don't know. What's one, of the, what's one of the ones that they had, like the galleons with all the guys inside of it stroking? <laughs> you mean like the big, super long canoes and things <laughs> or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're all like, stroke, stroke, stroke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're beating a drum, uh-huh. but instead of a drum, it's your clitoris. Doom, doom, doom. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm imagining. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Your imagination's a great place. It's fucked up. I know. It's <laughs> fucked up. So do you have any final thoughts? I guess the question, it's a silly question to ask. Would you go back by yourself? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you've, yes. You've already made that very clear. Very clear. Uh, do you have any other... So I will say, though, that next time I go, I think I'll be a lot more, and who knows on the day, but I would say right now, I would. I feel like I'll be more mentally prepared to play. And be open to more and probably not take as long to warm up to the idea, mm. if that makes sense. Because, I mean, it took me, I was probably 10 o'clock before I was like, yeah. all right, let's do, you know, because I knew I wasn't going to stay there much past 11-ish. I think I left 11, 11, 15. But I knew, yeah, it was very much of a, I'm either going to do this or I'm going to leave. And I really kind of want to do this. And, yeah, and I liked the guy and he had been patient and talking to me a lot and yeah and he was fun he was really fun i enjoyed it but i will say that next time i think i'll it'll i'll get that place mentally faster because i think i'll go into it knowing knowing a bit more what to expect there's something to say about comfort yeah once you're comfortable with a a venue or a situation yeah especially a situation like that that you're not used to being in Mm -hmm. you know it is basically a swingers club and you've definitely gone to swingers clubs by yourself but it's different there's always i it's funny because even when I went back, it's still a sauna at heart. Yeah. Uh, so it's different than the Swingers Club. Which is also kind of exciting. Which is something else I really like. Yeah. yeah. It, it does make it different. And mm. I do like that. Yeah. And I think because it is different is why I like it as well. You know, I love going to the Swingers Club. But this is this is something different and new for me. And so I, I do want to explore it a bit more. I do want to go back when, you know, if I can go when I'm in Melbourne next time. But it's, uh, yeah, it's interesting. I think I'll be in a different headspace, more open mindset, I would say, going into it next time. Because this was the first time that I'd gone by myself, I was more guarded and cautious. And, right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It was fun. It was definitely a lot of fun. Uh, so M was there. Q was not. Mm-hmm. There was someone else there. But M was behind the bar. And so that was also nice because, you know, we, we know him and can, can talk to him. And and uh, it was funny because even after I went and played and came back and I got like one last Coke before I left. And he said something about, was I going to play tonight? And I was like, I already did. And he was like, oh, I didn't even notice. Bullshit. You see everything that goes on there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It is uh-huh. yeah. way to play it off. Yeah. But oh, you gonna play that? Oh, I already did. I didn't notice. Did you want to watch? <laughs> so now, admittedly, M did say, "Oh, you should be here on Thursday," because sometimes there's often more couples and things. It's a little more swinger vibe, which I I liked it on Tuesday. Yeah. But I was like, nope, I have my own party on Thursday. <laughs> That's right, because your your own so, party was your gangbang. Yes. Yeah, so that Thursday was my gangbang. So I was like, nope, I have somewhere else to be. And I'm sure he was like, <laughs> that seems reasonable. He was like, man, I wish I could get to Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. yeah. No, it was actually really good. And like I said, it's a very, it's a welcoming environment. The people there are good. It's it's clean. I love that place. It's a, yeah. It is, you know, it's one of those things now that the more I go to Melbourne, it'll definitely be, I'll be in that family of, mm-hmm. of saunas. Uh, and More frequently. Yeah, more yeah. frequently. Just because it is, it's so comfortable to go. The people there yeah. working are great. Uh, I think a lot of it. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is if I'm down for work, if I'm not doing work in the evening, what else am I doing? Yeah, yeah. Because I'm then pretty well stuck in a hotel room or, or picking someone up from the hotel bar. And that's another thing I would like to point out as well, is that when I've gone down before for work, I've talked to people in the hotel bar. And that's okay, but that feels like a, I'm going to say, sleazier transaction to me than mm-hmm. going to the sauna does. 
And I don't know why. It's because everybody but, who goes to the sauna is, you know, you're already in a, in a sexual space where you don't, yeah, there's no question. Maybe. And those people are honest about mm-hmm. what they want. And I think for me, that's it. You go to a sauna, you're honest about what yeah. you want. You you want True. to play with somebody. True. Whereas when you go to the, uh, the hotel bar, it, you can't be honest. Yeah. Because if you're honest, society will pound you down. And so it does happen. You do pick up people. Yeah. But it's not... Also, to me, I would say that the hotel bar pickups are a bit more of that subtle, do you, do you not, back and forth. And I just... It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And I don't always pick up on the subtleties, like we said. And so it's just, yeah, I'd rather just go to the sauna. Because I've also tried Tender when I was down there before. We all know I'm not great at Tender. I think we've established that at this point. (laughs) It's true. I really suck at Tender. So I'm basically just going to give up on that. Uh, but I do, I think for me, the sauna is just more of like, I, this is, I'm comfortable there now, more comfortable there. And it's a place where I, if I want to play with people, I can go and play with people and yeah. Yeah. So I I think for me, that's, if I'm going to, to do be, you know, go out and try to hook up with anyone when I'm traveling like that, it would be at, at one of those saunas. Awesome. Yeah. There you go, folks. You want to hook up with Angela? Go to a sauna and melt. <laughs> uh, so we should get a spiff. <laughs> uh, so I guess we'll wrap this up. Okay. Uh, if anybody has any more questions or comments about what we talked about today, you know, feel free to send your messages uh, to us, to Angela. Uh, you can email us, uh, theatomsoflove at gmail.com, mm-hmm. or you can message us on any of our social media accounts. That's Instagram, Facebook, or the Twitterverse, at By the By Podcast. If you like what we're doing here and want to help us, uh, please support us on Patreon. That's www.patreon.com slash by the by podcast. Uh, we've got some, that's where you can get your cum rags. We're looking at, uh, we're already, we've hit our first goal and now looking at a stretch goal. Yeah. Uh, and that's super exciting. So yeah, very, very much looking forward to that. We want to do a big bisexual ball. So yeah. that's what we're going to try to do. And, uh, yeah, maybe throw out, I guess we need to throw up another stretch goal because what happens when we hit that one? Then it's like, then what do we do? We're going to buy a sauna. (laughs) 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 We'll do a Kickstarter campaign to fund us to buy, build a sauna in Sydney. Uh, so yeah, send us your messages, your questions, your comments, your rude remarks. We always love to hear about it. Absolutely. And we need to go take care of something because since for the last 40 minutes, I've been supporting an erection. Uh-huh. Uh, and I've been playing with myself over here and watching <laughs> you play with your tits over there. And I think we should go uh, take care of that right now. All right. Let's All right. do that. Hi, this is Emily, co-host of the Multiamory Podcast. We offer new ideas and advice for multiple forms of love, everything from conscious monogamy to ethical polyamory and radical relationship anarchy. And you're listening to a Swingset Network podcast. Find us and much more at swingset.fm.